Great. Thank you, Maria. Uh, this is Lori Cook. I'm going to be taking the first half of today's presentation. Um, so we will just launch right into it. Uh, we are copyrighted. I'm guessing most of you guys have seen the description of the course, otherwise you probably wouldn't be here. We do have our four learning objectives as well. Um, you guys have seen those before, uh, before today as well. So the way we're going to uh, structure today's presentation, we are going to talk about the AWC standards, uh, specifically the wood frame construction manual and the special design provisions for wind and seismic. Um, and we'll talk about how their recognition in the 2015 IBC and IRC. We'll provide a little bit of background information on wood frame shear walls and some of the basic assumptions that were used in the design and development of the data. And then we will jump into our examples. So we will have uh, wind-based examples as well as seismic-based examples. So starting with the codes and standards, because that's always the most exciting part, right? So the 2015 wood frame construction manual. That is actually referenced in both the IBC and IRC. Now, um, if you go into the IRC, you'll see it is listed as an alternative provision uh, in, in the IRC. You can also use it in instances in the IRC where uh, the wind loads are uh, above what the IRC would allow. So you can um, take that up to higher wind speeds than would be typically allowed in the IRC. If you go into the IBC, you'll see that the WFCM is listed in uh, item four there. So it would be allowed for uh, within uh, the, the guidance of section 2309. Um, yeah. And uh, what that just states is in 2309.1, that is if you are using the wood frame construction manual, for uh, an IBC building design, it needs to be a risk category one or two building. Uh, so you can see that um, highlighted in here. Uh, and then if you are going beyond that, then that would be beyond the scope of the, the, sh the standard. So you would need to use alternative methods. But so for, for risk category one or two, uh, for um, smaller structures, you would be able to use the wood frame construction manual for non-residential design. Now, the, the full title of the, the WFCM, the wood, frame the wood Frame Construction Manual for One and Two Family Dwellings. So, um, as I mentioned, it, it, it does have some applications on non-residential uh, uh, structures within the IBC, and we have a little bit more information on that further up. But there are going to be limits um, on the, the size of the structure, and then there are some limits as well on the loads. So in terms of the building size, you can see the dimensions, uh, the, the limits on the dimensions listed at the top of this table here. This would be table one within the WFCM. Uh, so you're going to be limited to a three-story building, or 33 feet in mean roof height. And you can see for our uh, snow loads, you can you know, if you go down on the bottom of the table here, you'll see different uh, the requirements on the dead and live loads, uh, as well as the snow load. We can go up to a 70 pound per square foot ground snow load, and then for wind loads, we can do uh, 110 to 195 miles per hour, uh, and that's going to be per the ASCE 710 wind speeds, which I'll talk about in a second here. Uh, and then for seismic, we can go up to a seismic design category D2. So the, the scope is pretty broad on this structure, or on, on the, uh, the size of the structures and the loads on the structures for what the wood frame construction manual would be applicable for. And, uh, here we go. Now, as I mentioned, there are some instances where you can use it on non-residential structures, the wood frame construction manual. Um, in uh, IBC 2309, they detailed risk category one or two. Uh, in terms of other uh, limits on the structure, it would work better for a single story slab on grade structures where you're going to be less than 80 feet in any building dimension in terms of the length or the width. 
Uh, so for you know commercial retail buildings like restaurants and office buildings, this would be uh, something that you could use, and it, it can be a good time saver. Um, and it, it can be used again for the lateral designs that we're going to be talking about today, both the wind and seismic, but it also will cover your gravity design. So it's a very comprehensive standard.